Fox is going to be the one locked up, and he's taken down after the exhaust. The Monsoon out, Uncasing, keeping them all alive. Freddy is going to be the next to fall. A massive equalizer right in the back. Ryu going to bail out of danger as he picks up the kill on N rated Fox, doing all that he can as the tower falls down. Oh, Five. they're going to find Forgiven as they knock it back in. Yarn and taking that one. There was a teleport coming out as Freddy and Spence Garner in the back, but there's not that much damage. Ryu somehow still staying alive. Spence will die. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Devin Pirate, Texas Young. I'm taking over the caster desk, but still with me, of course, is Mitch Krepo Vorspils. How's your first day been, man? It's been all right. Try cast, you know, cast with a quick shot. Now I get you. I just get the full caster experience. We like to leave nothing out on the table. And, you know, another team who doesn't leave anything up to chance either, it's H2K. We saw there them securing their third place spot in the spring uh, finals out in Madrid. This is a team that controls the pace of the game so well. They control uh, every move they make, and they don't seem to really make that many mistakes. I'm curious to see if they can do that now with the talent pool being up here in Europe. They're one of the few teams with a unique play style, so everybody knows what to expect out of H2K. If you don't, it's this hyper, objective-focused fo play style in a 10 to 20 minute mark where they magically get a whole, whole lot of towers, objectives, dragons, everything, while not giving away too much counter objective counter kills and it really works for them the weird part is everybody knows they play that way but somehow they still get away with it yeah and it's just it's i think it comes down to execution they just don't really give their opponents a chance to react even if you see it coming you just simply still can't stop it so that's really what has been i, I think the secret to their success as they prepare to take on rocket today we'll see if they still have that on rocket side though i'm a little bit worried i mean we, there's a lot of unknowns going into this one they've made some changes I think a lot of expectations outside of the organization have dropped, but them themselves, they still feel very confident. Let's be really blunt here. Rockhead will have to prove why they kept Woolite in the shuffling 80 carry rosters. Every, every 80 carry almost moved teams. A lot of flack on Woolite for getting caught out in the late game. Didn't perform all that well in the spring split. Rockhead opted to keep him. They went through relegations. They replaced Overpower in the top lane, but pretty much unchanged rosters for the rest of it. How are they going to fare? Is Woolite suddenly gotten better? You know, were there any other issues in team? We don't know it, but he has a lot to show in this split. Yeah, although we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go rewind it just a second, go back to H2K, and let's bring up their roster too. So this is one of the few unchanged rosters in the LCS European split this uh, summer. It is Odawamne in the top lane, Lulex in the jungle, Ryu, of course, the mid, Yarnin, the AD carry, support Kasing, and of course, they are coached still by Prolly. And I think the story of this team in the spring was really simple. Kasing joins week three, and they go on a tear. Yeah, very phenomenal player. Kasing really, really strong in lane. But you would expect like strong lane players to not have a big impact in the game like outside, you know, coming out of solo queue. But he really plays the map well. He roams, he took up some shot calling, and I was really impressed by him. Initially, I'm going to be honest, when people were like rating Kasing as a top, you know, amateur support player, I didn't rate him very highly. I even told him, you know, said, Ray, you know, I'm sorry, dude. I, I was wrong. I was really, really wrong. Fantastic player, really solid mechanics. It's almost like a, whenever you play against him, it's a mind game, you know. He will predict your hook forward once, you think that's a pattern, then he'll get you backwards. He keeps reading your mind, and he's just a fantastic player. So that's the secret. It's uh, psychic powers on h Yeah, right? or well, just really good game reads. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm just bad, you know. Who knows? Well, you know, it's okay. We can't all be pro players, Screpo. Not anymore, no. sadly enough. Well, uh, I really think another big part of this team, too, is Ryu. In the playoffs especially, he stepped up. I'm really wondering, is this sort of a one-off thing, or is he really getting back to form? I mean, he... he pretty much had insane amounts of solo kills on his own, really getting back to that assassin style that he was known for in Korea. I mean, time speaks in his favor, right? He's joined a new region, has to adapt to the language. You know, obviously his communication with his team is going to get better and better over time. H2K is a really friendly environment. Like, they all seem like to have fun with each other. And over time, that gets a little better. You know, you feel incorporated, you feel part of the team. And once you, that happens and your communication gets on point, you start feeling more comfortable, start making more risky plays. And it really showed in, in playoffs that he was definitely a more comfortable Ryu than we saw at the start of the split. Yep, and not just him, the whole team. I mean, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. They haven't made any roster changes, but turning to the red side in this matchup, we have Rocket, who have made some of their changes. Their expectations have fallen a bit, or team expectations on them, but we'll see if this changes now. That is in the top, Steve. In the jungle, it is Yankos, mid, Nuke Duck, AD, Woolite, and of course, their support, Vander, and now, of course, coaching them, Yamato Cannon. Yeah, definitely uh, not changing any any players outside of Overpower in the top lane. I think Nuke Duck was rated very highly as a mid laner uh, by a lot of people. I still think he has really, really good fundamentals, but 
he somehow just didn't manage to show it on the stage. You know, in Solo Queue, very impressive player, always in the top rankings. But on the stage, he just played a lot more passive, you know, really more farther back than I would expect Nuke Duck to play. But, you know, Rocket took the break seriously. They prepared for relegations. They kept training. Uh, maybe they have a leg up in, uh, against other teams that maybe took a longer break. Let's see how they perform. Yeah, I think that is definitely the key. We have to watch and sit. But before we get into picks and bans now, we're going to have some insights from Rocket's newest member, Steve, on how Kasing thinks he'll breathe some new life into the roster. Actually, Steve was one of my, is one of my best friends in esports. He has the best attitude I've ever played with in a team. And I feel like him being on Rocket could even mean it's kind of like the Kasing effect where because of his positivity, like he could potentially change the entire team around. So that's why I have high hopes for Rocket, especially for Steve as well. Well, there you have it. So Kasing has some high hopes for Steve, and I think everyone's wondering what he's going to bring to the table here. Yeah, big question mark. I've played against him a couple times in solo queue, always very nice, uh, which is a rarity sometimes in Europe. I've heard but that yeah, he bakes cookies. I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm just trying to stay off the cookies. Ah, get fit. Get That's fit always the way to do it. So, as we are uh, just getting pretty close into champ select here, uh, just before you see any of these picks, what are your thoughts? What do you think uh, H2K will do different this time, or should they do anything different from what we've seen from them in the spring so far? Like, do you expect any new picks, anything different out of them? I think H2K will stick to the meta. They seem like a team that always plays very meta. Uh, the only pick that's outside of meta that was really good, or outside of current metagame, is Annie, kind of, and hasn't been played too much, you know? But Kasing played a mean Annie. I remember whenever we played against them, we usually just banned it to get rid of the, 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 the engage threat that he offers, because they like to group around objectives and then pull the trigger with the flash Annie stun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping for Bard. Uh, Kasing is a, a Bard fan too, so hope 